Blue rinse? Like fucking grandma. <laughs> you give me a grandma blue rinse, that would be it, wasn't it? <laughs> Sounds like a sex, a sex. <laughs> you know, a grandma blue rinse. <laughs> Jesus Christ, welcome to another video <laughs> on isolation exercise. <laughs> So yes, isolation exercises, it's something everybody knows if you're trying to build muscle shape and you want to chisel your physique, isolation exercises are a great one for doing that and fine tuning, but are you doing them correctly? Because today we're going to cover one of my favourite exercises for every single body group that you might already be doing, but even if you are, I'm going to make sure that I give you every little hint, tip and trick to make sure that you're firing all the maximum muscle fibres and creating the proper technique that will help you bust through those plateaus and build those lovely little details. If you're unaware what an isolation exercise is or a little bit confused, it's really simple. Your compound movements are things that utilize more than one muscle group to move the weight from A to B. But an isolation exercise focuses on only targeting one specific muscle group during the motion of the exercise. Therefore, we have to make sure that our technique is correct and that our focus is correct so that we are isolating the intended muscle group. So first one, if you're new to the gym or old to the gym, it's gonna be a good one biceps. We've all seen this, it's the good old standard bicep curl. So we're going to hit these points hard and fast. Number one, you don't need a heavy weight for this. This is about contraction over weight. We're going to stand with our shoulders engaged, rib cage down, glutes squeezed to control the hips, chin tucked in so we've got a good posture. From here we're going to turn the weights out and this is going to immediately load the bicep. From here we're going to keep the elbows fixed where they are. We're going to curl up, keeping those elbows down. Squeeze at the top by turning the little fingers over ever so slightly, centimetre, and then fight that negative, keeping the elbows tight to the body, all the way down, control, get to the bottom. What we're going to do is flex the tricep, so we got full extension, and we're going to go back up to the top, rotating over, and squeeze. What we're avoiding is the lift, flick, roll, and drop. Next up we're going to be building some bowler shoulders, we're going to be using lateral raises. Now there's an important thing with these, you'll see a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll come up with their hand higher than the shoulder. This is not what we want, all that weight is then loading up on the bicep and the elbow. We want to be lifting from the elbows, so you forget that there's a weight in your hands. You're going to keep the rib cage down, squeeze the glutes, control the hips, we're going to be lifting without shrugging our traps. So relax your neck, tuck your chin in and you're going to lift up from the elbows up to shoulder height and you're going to rotate your little fingers over just a touch but that's an added extra don't worry about that too much you want to keep the weights parallel to the floor at all times and it'll look something like this so they're going to come up from the elbows and you'll see the weight slide in front of the shoulders so we're not parallel to the shoulders we're in front elbows higher than the dumbbell that's going to keep the load on the shoulders so you can literally see it working here and what i'm not doing is pitching neck in shrugging or Throw in the weights nice and high. Control it, lower the weight, up, squeeze, down, rep. Now we're on to the quadriceps recalls. Quads. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great one, this is called the Bulgarian split squat. Now, the reason we're looking at this one over leg extensions is because, well, leg extensions, you should know them by now. They're relatively boring, they're always taken up, so this gives you something to do. It's also gonna activate a little bit of core alongside in terms of making you have to think about stabilization and body posture. So we're working single legs at a time. What you're gonna do is put your non-working leg up on the bench. We're gonna tuck our toes under. Then we're gonna take a plate, hold that at chest height, a lot like you do with a goblet squat. From here, we're gonna drop straight down, keeping the plate in front of the knee, loading all the weight on that right leg, which is the working leg. Then we're gonna drive up through the heels, squeeze, hips through, glutes. Keeping that rib cage down at all times and repping out a little bit like a lunge movement, you'll feel the same kind of pump, same kind of burn. This is a great one for helping you focus core whilst keeping that load solidly on the quad and off the knees. One of my favorites for the back, and that's the dumbbell row. A lot of people get a little bit egotistical with this one and lift too heavy. What we're looking for here is a pull and a squeeze, and we're lifting through from the elbow. So body setup, you're gonna plant your front lead hand however you feel comfortable. Most of the time, I either have my hand over to the side, on one of these or over to the front or even a gorilla fist it depends on the bench and the height but what we want is basically a neutral back we're going to pull the rib cage in so we're not hyper extending that torso rib, ribs down core engaged we're going to plant our foot out on the working side knee on the bench on the other side from here we're going to take the dumbbell what we're looking to do we're looking to rotate down where the dumbbell starts 
Then we're gonna pull the shoulders up to a level and then pull through with the elbow. What we're not doing is swinging through with this partial movement. Because if we do that, if I then rotate back to square, look how far I've actually lifted the weight. I've missed all this contraction point. So, pick up, release the elbow, pull the scapula in, pull the elbow up, square the shoulders, squeeze, back down, roll. And then make it a nice, smooth squeeze and contraction keeping that spine neutral core engaged rib cage down a real nice squeeze and pull through boom get this one right and you will feel it from here all the way down the back as well it's helping work those rear delts this is my favorite exercise and it is a crossover rear delt pull using the cables there's a couple of things here you're going to need to know and one of them is okay fingers and elbows high now this particular cable doesn't have a detachable flippity clip yours should have so get rid of this if you can we're going to use an okay grip around the ball of the cable there's your okay grip this is going to sit across my body so i'm going to walk across get the next cable okay grip that one and bring myself to the center from here what i'm going to do is leave my hands in place level with the cables and i'm going to take a step back leaving my hands where they are from here i'm going to bring my elbows up to around about ear height now what I'm looking to do is bring my palms facing forward, then as I come out to the side, keeping those okay fingers, I'm gonna push my palms to the walls either side. We see how my elbows have dropped, that's what I don't wanna happen. So I'm gonna keep those elbows high as I come round, so I'm pulling from the elbows. What I'm not doing as well is pigeon necking. So I'm keeping my chin tucked in, neck relaxed, from here, bang, squeeze those rear delts to the back, rib cage down, glutes engaged, soft knees and then it's just reps, like this. So think about keeping those elbows around about ear height. What you're gonna to wanna to avoid doing is pulling down towards the chest and just working the back. You do this correctly, keep those okay fingers will keep you directing the weight where it should go. It should keep the load on those rear delts and keep it off the traps. Squeeze. <clears throat> Lightweight, no ego. Boom. Next up, triceps, overhead rope extensions on the cables. First tip and trick on this one is, we're gonna be pulling from the lower side of the cable, and we're gonna be coming behind the head. What you don't need to do is have the cable at the very, very bottom. If you have an adjustable, you only need it as low as is necessary, so that when you lift this behind the head, the stack releases. That's gonna stop you having to rip it up from a really deep position and risking shoulder injury. So, bear that in mind. So we've got the cable at optimal level. What we're gonna do, we're gonna grip the rope and pull it behind the head, nice and relaxed and turn into it. This is what I'm talking about, protecting the shoulders by not having that too low. From here, what we're gonna do, knuckles together behind the head, we're gonna keep our elbows quite wide, rib cage down, knees soft, glutes engaged. You feeling there's a bit of a rhythm with the ribs and glutes going on here? Remember that throughout everything that you're doing. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend up, squeeze to full extension and only split the rope as necessary to get full extension. Don't try and go too wide, only as wide as necessary to extend. Back down nice and slow, keeping that rib cage down, knuckles together behind the head, and then drive up and squeeze. The beauty of this exercise is it completely removes the ability to use body weight to move the weight. So often you'll see people doing this exercise from the top of the cables, leaning in and plowing through with weight, getting zero muscle activation. Whereas if you're just doing this, saving the elbows, shoulders, and maximizing muscle contraction and activation. <laughs> Next up, chest cable flies. So the setup on this one, one to avoid the injury is the way of getting these up. Nice and loose, I'm gonna grab both sides. To bring it to my start position, what I'm gonna do is pull in from the elbows and then get my body over the top. So pull and in. Now I'm gonna step forward and give myself a little bit of clearance so I'm able to have that weight pulling behind me, not up from side to side. Does that make sense? So we're making it less lateral and more from back to front. From this position, what I'm gonna do is have my fingers clasped. I'm gonna set my start position. Because if you start right, you'll finish right. So I'm gonna set my shoulders back. I'm gonna pull my rib cage down, squeeze my glutes, soft knees. From here, I'm going to release the hands. I'm gonna use the mirrors in front of me to watch my elbows. I'm gonna come out to the sides. I'm gonna come as deep as I could go with a bar. So I'm not overstretching, bringing the traps in and dipping my neck. This is what you'll often see is people this and then shrugging through. This isn't activating as much muscle as we could be and your risk of injury increases dramatically. So, from here, shoulders down, engaged, chin in, rib cage down, extend back to where I can feel a bar would go. Now from here, I'm gonna drive through, palms together, squeeze, keeping my neck relaxed, focusing on squeezing that chest. I'm gonna keep it slow on the negative, 
and explode through the positive, but keeping it controlled at all times. Rib cage is down and I'm focusing on that squeeze. So remember, no pigeon necking, no trap engaging, no swinging through the body, and certainly no swinging through like an ape. Phew. Build muscle, not monkey business. Hamstrings, and we're gonna go with a seated leg curl. So welcome to number one hamstring machine in gym. But number one thing, don't be bitch. Put pad to maximum stretch. Don't be bitch. Don't want in the way to touch down. I've gone from Russian into something different. <laughs> <laughs> On a serious note though, we do not want that stack touching, so give yourself maximum and negative fight here. Don't bitch out. We want that stretch on the negative, that's why we're going to be doing half of the work of each rep. Another tip, you need this pad uncomfortably tight to cross your quads because if we have any knee lift, what we're going to also get is the hip shifting forward. So don't just tick it down one and go, that's okay. If I can do this, it's not tight enough. You want to push it down as hard as it can go so it almost feels uncomfortable. From here, what we need to think about is the hamstrings being the bicep of the leg. Think about how you would squeeze your bicep. It's exactly the same with hamstrings. Most people from this position will pull through from the heels now and they'll start to let their hips shift forward. We're immediately losing tension on the hamstring. To increase the ability to contract that hamstring, what I'm also gonna do is increase the negative potential of this exercise by simply leaning forward. The moment we do this, keeping our rib cage down, we're gonna feel tension on the hamstring as that stretch kicks in and our hips are automatically gonna sit deeper back. From here, bring our toes up, pull through our heels, squeeze that hamstring like you would a bicep, keeping those hips back. And now, on the negative, I'm gonna fight it and I'm not gonna allow those knees to lift up. I'm gonna extend the legs, which is then causing that stretch to reload on that tricep. I get to the top, hold, and then contract and squeeze one more time. Get this right and you're gonna get a powerful contraction and stretch and keep full load on the muscle at all times, plus protect your knees. Back up, back up, back up. Make sure that your knees are always in line with the pivot point of the machine. That is vitally important. If your knees are out of line with the pivot, the knees are gonna take all the load. Let's go. Welcome. Exercise for less. Good gym, come here, train, make muscle. It's good. <laughs> you look Russian. <laughs> there you go, I hope you enjoyed that. Those are my top movements for isolation. For one part for each body. If you love this exercise video, we can do another one, let me know, or just let me know about specific muscle groups you'd like to know about. Remember, we're back on that fight journey as well, so there's other videos on here, including bag work, some fight style training, some cardio pushes, but all the time also focusing on building that muscle and chiseling that physique. So make sure to hit that notification bell, make sure to select all notifications so that you don't miss any of these videos. I've been Lex, I'll catch you in the next one. Remember to let me know if you like this video by hitting that thumbs up, comments below, and I'll catch you in the next one. Lately I've been doing shit different Cooking like a chef, I've been all up in the kitchen Had to make a move, had to make a little distance A Lot of people tripping, they could never see the vision Fuck that, tell them bounce